Form Next 2025, and I'm in a crazy setting at the Stratasys booth, and this is my buddy Alex. What's going on, man? Hello, nice to meet you. Good to be here and be doctors, right? Because we're gonna be doing an operation. Simulation. I'm not a doctor, not a medical professional. I'm an engineer, so don't take any advice from my... No, side. there is no <laughs> medical advice coming from this video. Nope. But what we are showing is a really cool way for Stratasys materials to help doctors plan for surgeries, right? Yes, train their skills, basically. Yep. Take me through this. What, what do we have here? So on this model, you can train basically all the important surgeries you have around of your eyelids. So it's a plastic surgery. Yeah. And you can do uh, traumatologies. So if you have a big trauma there, you have all the anatomies in there to re re oh. uh, reconstruct everything up again. Right, because we can actually, if someone has trauma, that can be scanned, simulated, and then a doctor can practice before yes. approaching the trauma yes. because they only typically get one try. So we get to practice then, right? Yeah, we are going to go through this model so we cut it open and take a look <laughs> Which how we, it was. For something like this, obviously it's not a machine or a material that I have in my garage. What machines and materials make this possible? So we use the J850 DAP printer, so digital anatomy printer. And the materials were used is uh, mostly the Agilus range with the DAP materials. So you have a tissue, you have gel, you have bone matrix in there. And that's all together in this model and is printed in basically one piece, which is uh, replaceable. So it gets out of the printer like this, gets clean, support removed, and then it's almost ready to go. <laughs> that's perfect. Well, and this is similar because people have seen before what we did at Seattle Children's Hospital, yeah. where the doctor made the tracheas and was able to vary the density yes. using the same type of things, right? Yeah, that's the, the beautiful thing on it. So we can mix all these materials together and create different hardnesses. So shore values, uh, colors, densities, and simulate stuff really, really close. Well, with this system in place and our simulation ready, is it time to be doctors? Let's play doctors. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Alex, what's the first step? So let's go and take a look into the model. So we grab a uh, scalpel and then just cut up the skin. So you can see everything is flexible. We are just doing a cut. So you're cutting within the eyelid margin, right? Yes. I mean, that's not exactly how you would do an operation. No. It's just to demonstrate what's possible. So you can open up the skin now already yeah. and see you have the margin of the ocularis muscle there. Oh, So yeah. you have all the layers who are in there in this model. So you can take a look at it and then you see there is the muscle. You would stretch it a bit further and then you can go underneath the muscles. Oh, I see. So there is the ocularis and then your eyelid margin starts. So we highlighted these uh, critical areas in color so the surgeon can really see where he's uh, manipulating. Oh, so when, in simulations and training, it's yes. important to provide kind of like the, the, the guide rails for yeah. this. So we have different kind of models. Some are more realistic and some are more easy. So this is one which is more easily because we've highlighted everything in colors. Otherwise, it's really hard to orientate inside of a model oh, like sure. this. Oh, sure. Okay. So you can now see we're underneath the muscle. It's infiltrated, so you can find uh, the blood vessels there. So we are getting some liquid. We need to remove it. And so you actually, you have material in here that maintains a liquid state to simulate the, yep. the blood in the yes. tissue. So that it's always the same consistency is quite a big deal because we are at such Just put a that anywhere. <laughs> we just put it inside of your head there. The nail comes out next week. So you could remove all the fat. You would have different tools at the surgery to scrape it out. <laughs> and then you have all the fatty areas. They go through the whole process. So maintaining everything, managing everything. The next layer, so you have the, the orbital septum. Oh. It depends You've got on. all the layers of the eyeball here. No, not yet. So you can now see on top and underneath the Müller's muscle, you get another area for the orbital fat bed. It depends how much fat is there. You can also remove the orbital fat bed. And then if you've done this, you would just close everything up again, take your suture material. You've done this a few times in the past few days, haven't you? Yeah, and in the development, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would just start suturing it up again. Oh, so I mean, these really allow the, the, the team responsible to practice yes. 
different, uh, different methodologies, different yes. cut patterns, different suture patterns. Totally. And we can uh, uh, put in some diseases, like you have a tumor somewhere. This is the basic model, but you have attachments like this is for, a, for different surgeries. So you have the fatty tissue there, which is oh. way too big, so you can release it. You can also uh, traumatize. You have the canto. If you have too much pressure, so eyes growing, you need to release pressure from the rim of the eyelid. You can prepare yourself as a doctor way more better and make them more comfortable. If you want, you can just take your step, try to find the okay. cantus area. So cantus is the eye. Oh, right in there. there. Okay, so yeah. my cut would be where? Yeah, so start there and go down there. Got it, okay. A bit in this, at this angle. Okay. There we go. Easier to guide the cutting line. It feels like I'm cutting through a really dense material. If you try to cut through a rubber band, there's a drag force yeah. that's in there. Yeah. And so you have to position the knife. Yeah. Oh, so this is great. So not only is it training someone for a specific surgery, but doctors can use this for technique practice as yes. well. Yeah, now you're getting at the fatty area, there are the nerves, so this is quite a critical part. You should not cut really deep in a this facial is the, area. This is the triangle of death. There Tread lightly. You can see the nerve strings in yellow. So oh, wow. Yellow? Yeah, I see it. I see it. So this is the facial nerve. The facial nerves is running oh, along there. Oh, so cutting that there. would then paralyze that side of my face. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, oh. there was the vessel. <laughs> we, oh, we've got, okay. Cautery, cautery. This could get someone interested in being in the medical field because it gives them a real feel for how it is. This is quite complex, you have nerves there. So you could train the reconstruction of this area, tensioning up again, suture thing back together, yeah. which is, as you can imagine, quite, quite hectic in well, there. Right. And, well, and, even... and we have a really huge area opened up now. Well, here, I'm gonna put this down because I'm already yeah. realizing that I'm gonna need a few more years of training. Doctor? Doctor? Doctor. But something like this, this trainer for the eyes, it, yeah. I, it sounds like, I mean, this is going to be massively successful. It's not only the eyeballs or the, the orbital socket area, like you could do this anywhere on the body. Yeah. We're doing it in different areas for different customers. You just so have you, a finger. <laughs> we just have fingers, we have hands, we have eyelids. With our brand, the eye create, we do almost for the cataract surgery you had, or yeah. you said. Yep, I did, We yes. have uh, trainers for doing a cataract surgery. This is just wow. an demo eye. I just got the lens to doing the slice off yeah. and be able to get, wow. Yeah. Oh, and then the, the fingernail is, feels it's like a fingernail, hard, yeah. but the, 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 the meaty part is meaty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all that, that edgeless material, right? So basically the insert is edgeless and Vero and uh, DAP materials and the the outer head is just the uh, uh, holder, it's an FDM part to get, get the shape of the head. So that head though, uh, it looks like it is a flexible FDM part, yeah. but I would imagine this material isn't, isn't the cheapest, right? Yes. It's an expensive material as yeah. it should be, but you don't have to recreate the whole face. No. You can just recreate the parts where yes. you need to do the training. Yeah, and it's important to have everything uh, set it up like this, like how are you holding your hand? So you need a head, something like this. Absolutely. You need the same position, you need the same angle. So everything should be uh, as realistic. Alex, this has been a joy. Yeah. Like learning about this and what the Stratasys materials can allow people to do, this is game changing. This is gonna change the world for better. Yeah, let's hope so. Now we already had this uh, model used at about 40 uh, surgeons in our university in Innsbruck and had courses. So 40 doctors were going through this process on training on these models. And That's next cool. year we are going to scale it. Really? Yes. Oh, dude, good job. This is so cool. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. And uh, don't do self-surgery. That's it. And as always, <laughs> high five. Bring it in. Ooh, crisp.